It's about time I made people on the internet angry. I only do this out of necessity. The TASM 2 suit gets nothing but praise. It is the most revered live-action Spider-Man suit, praised for its accuracy to the source material. The colors, the way it flows in the wind, it's beauty, but it isn't perfect. Is it good? For sure. No doubt about it. The way the fabric ripples as it moves, the paneling on the blue fabric framing the back logo, finally having giant lenses in a Spider-Man movie was awesome. And seeing the return of non-matte screen printed blue fabric was amazing. This is debatably the most comic accurate Spider-Man suit ever put on screen. One of the things I like about this suit is its link to Peter's character evolving as I mentioned in my last video dissecting these costumes. To summarize, Peter in the last movie is angry and genuinely a menace and his costume fits the bill, making Peter look leaner and scarier with darker colors and sharper lines. In this movie, Spider-Man is more of an icon and is even idolized by the people of New York. Peter is friendlier in this movie and more approachable. His costume is simplified, devoid of the cuts and complicated patterns of the original Tasm suit, making him look friendlier. Could you imagine Tasm 1 Peter helping Max out in the middle of the street in the same exact way he did in Tasm 2? Because Tasm 1 Peter would probably just grab him and move him out of the way, skip the motivational talk in the blueprints, and move right on. He looks iconic. He looks like the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And most of all, he looks more comic accurate than ever before, so why don't I think it's perfect? Why wouldn't it be? Well, in all honesty, the red is too dark. In a lot of these shots, the red is almost as dark as the blue in some spots. If there's one thing I kind of like about it being this dark and this reflective, it kind of reminds me of like the texture of a beetle. But even still, that's like the wrong bug. I think the only reason to blame for it being this dark was the fabric chosen. While the fabric color itself is already way too dark, due to the fact that the fabric gives off a little bit of shine, it makes the fabric really dark in any lighting that isn't just broad daylight. The best I could find to match the fabric they used was a nylon wine red spandex. I believe it was from Blue Moon Fabrics. Here's a matte version of that fabric to show you just how much brighter it is. I know that in a film it's important to have your costume costumes have a lot of lighting variation, so they look good on camera, so that means picking fabrics that are very reactive to lighting, but still, I think picking a brighter red fabric would have kept that lighting variation, while still having a good looking red. Here's one of my suits with a brighter nylon red spandex to show you how much brighter it can be. Here's footage of me even wearing the suit. I just think the red on any classic Spider-Man suit should never be dark red. I think a darker red wouldn't look good for a friendlier Spider-Man. I just think brightening the red would make the TASM 2 suit look much more friendly and help it really nail that friendly neighborhood Spider-Man look it's oh so clearly going for. And I don't- look, I don't care if the colors are brighter in person, okay? The only lens we're supposed to view the suit through is the movie. Only like five of us who watch this movie are ever gonna see this costume in person. So if it's dark in the movie, and we see it as dark and nothing else, it doesn't matter if it's brighter in person. I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but I can just see one of you being like, Oh, well, your set photos, it's actually way better. Shut up! Shut up! It doesn't look like that in the movie. Shut up. And, uh, logo placement is very important. Does this look good to you? Okay, cool. What about now? Okay, okay, okay. What about now? Doesn't that bother you? The logo is so low on Andrew's chest. Like, look at this shot from No Way Home. Toby's logo is definitely way more well-placed than Andrew's, and comparing them makes it abundantly clear. Like, look at that! That's night and day! Andrew just has saggy logo. It's like saggy titties, but for spider logo. This is just a personal gripe of mine, but it really bothers me that the lenses are a darker black than the logo. I feel like there should only be two shades of black on any classic Spider-Man suit, and they need to be in very specific places. The webbing can be gray, dark gray, or black. Whatever you want. The lenses can be black, but they just have to be the same color and appear to be the same material as the emblem. It's just more visually satisfying that way. Here, let me show you in the non-scripted section. Ah, hello. Okay, we're back. We're here with the non scripted section where I'm going to be showing you the ins and outs about the Spider-Man suit from TASM2 works. 
Uh, I'm going to go on with the current tangent I was currently going on. Uh, these sections are going to be quite short, again, because it's just me like going over the ins and outs of all this stuff with an up-close angle with a mock-up I drew up myself. So, again, here are the colors of the lenses, the webbing, and the logos. So again, you have gray, gray, and then black. Usually, I'd prefer it when it's black, gray, black. And just to show you I'm not bullshitting, here's the actual suit. And of course, let's take a closer look at these fabrics. Here, you have the red. Now the red is not shiny. It's not as shiny as the blue. This is actually just printed onto the fabric in a way that's like really low key. Of course, I'm gonna put an image up here. I don't know how exactly this was printed on. I don't know the exact method, but here is how it looks up close. It's obviously not as shiny when you move over to the blue sections. Now the blue sections and lighting, they almost turn completely white when hit with the appropriate lighting. But here is the blue sections. As you can see, they have been screen printed over with a hexagonal brick texture. It's sort of like a mix between hexagons and bricks, but the more rounded edge sort of gives it away. At least I think that's what it is. I'll, I'll correct myself in post, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to credit the Twitter user that made the mod I'm currently using as background footage. Thank you so much to Andrew4586 for making this mod. His commissions are currently open, so you can commission him to make mods for your favorite PC Spider-Man games. It's actually really, really easy to play with mods, so I'd recommend checking that out. In all honesty, there's no question about it. The TASM 2 suit is definitely good. It's definitely the best Spider-Man's ever looked on screen to date. But if that's the case, why am I being so harsh on it? Well, I just think that I never see anybody nitpick this suit. I think the conversation about this suit always is just, oh, it's perfect, and they never just sit down to really criticize it, and that's what I'm here today. That's what I'm doing, I'm criticizing it. But that doesn't mean it isn't perfect. I may be shitting on it, but that doesn't mean it's not good. I'm still criticizing it because it's something I love. I love it enough to criticize it. It's, it's the best Spider-Man's looked on screen in terms of CGI and just the suit in general. It feels like Sony cared more about making Spider-Man look like he's actually swinging around in this movie more than any other Spider-Man movie in live action has ever cared about before. It looks good, but then again, no one wants to sit down and point out some of the flaws that it has. And that's why I'm here, to sit down and point out some of its flaws. That doesn't make it a bad suit, that doesn't mean I hate it, it just means that I love it enough to point out its flaws. And that's it. The TASM 2 suit is a really good adaptation of the original source material, and it looks great despite its few flaws. And in 2014, this was definitely the best Spider-Man's ever looked on screen. Hello. Um. Welcome to the end of this video. Uh, these videos are honestly getting shorter and shorter. Uh, as much as I love to talk about, you know, these suits from the perspective of sort of like an amateur cosplayer and costume designer, it's getting harder and harder for me to pump out 10 minute videos uh, about these costumes. But I'm gonna try my hardest to keep doing that. I'll definitely have more to talk about in the next episode when I focused on the homecoming suit. Uh, but speaking of progress, here's all the suits all lined up next to each other, which is very cool to look at. Uh, I'm already noticing the amount of uh, quality I put into these ren into these I almost said renders, but these like these little pictures. Like for example, if you like look closely at the Raimi suits, there is no texture to the fabric. But I've started doing textures on the fabrics, which is cool. Um, I'm putting a lot of effort into the drawings, and it's fun. It's actually fun to have these little, you know, little sprites of all these super cool costumes that I can use at any time. So, yeah, the next time, next time we're gonna talk about the homecoming suit, you might be surprised about my opinion of it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be talking about the homecoming suit and sort of touching on costume design in the MCU in general 
Uh, this video was a little shorter because I had to focus on the very few flaws of the TASM suit. That's the only reason this video was very short, because there's not that many flaws. But I still felt like they were important enough to be highlighted. Nothing I say in this video was like bullshit or like, you know, oh, he's only saying that just for clout. This is shit that I genuinely think, and I do genuinely think the TASM 2 suit isn't criticized enough. But I do think it should be lightly criticized, and that's it. You shouldn't open your, your booty hole and shit all over it. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. I appreciate you all being here. I love you all so much, and I, of course, will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye.